Ramen. I've been wanting to make this forever. And to be completely honest with you, I've been holding off a little bit. Nick might have been holding back, but... Baby, there's nothing holding me back. First, into this large pot here, I'm gonna go in with all my chicken wings. I'm gonna go with the chicken thigh bones we've been trimming lately. Next, I'm gonna start taking these pork hocks that we got from the Asian grocery store and dropping these right in with our chicken. Next, we're gonna drop in some pork hocks from the deep end of my freezer. I'm gonna go ahead and add my last bit of protein in there, which are duck wings. And we're gonna go with some duck bones. And to make up for my lack of wings and satisfy my fetish, I'm gonna go with some chicken feet. Don't yuck my yum. Then crank up the heat and bring this to a nice rolling boil. Crank up the heat and bring it up to a nice boiling roll. Some people will tell you to rinse this all the way out, but I like to keep all the flavor that's still in there from the bone. If you bag up all this scum, it becomes me. But this broth smells really bad right now. I wonder if this step is correct. I saw that Uncle Roger reviewed this video, so let's go check it out. There's so much scum in animal bone. It looks bad, but it also tastes weird. All right, we gotta change tutorials. Let's see how my favorite Mexican lady does the broth. Strain the bones out through a colander. Once you strain them out, rinse the bones with cold water. Strain the bones out with the colander, and once strained, clean it with uh, water. Put them back in the pot and cover with water. Put them back in the pot and cover with clean water. And it's time to head back to Nick's video. This is gonna do all the work for us while we go to sleep. Just gonna forget about it and let it simmer for 12 hours while I sleep. It's been more than 12 hours. Seems like the hole is having a little hard time containing itself. The broth is looking pretty fragrant. Next, we'll do our chashu pork belly. Now, this part you don't have to do overnight, but I'm gonna sous vide it to get it really soft and tender. You already know I don't have a sous vide, so we're gonna have to look for another video. I'm going to use butcher's twine to perform bondage on this fat roll. We're gonna use butcher's twine to tie this off-colored fat strip. This piece is acting a little bit rebellious, but I'm gonna tie it up against its will, just like what my ex did to me. Oh jeez, okay. Once the skillet comes up to temperature, drizzle in two tablespoons of neutral oil. Once the pan is hot, drizzle in canola oil. Drop your fat roll into the pan. Drop my fat ass, uh, I mean fat roll into the pan. And, and sear it on all sides until it's crispy, golden brown, and fatty, just like you. Sear on all sides till it's fatty, misshaped, unevenly brown, just like me. We're going to let that rest while we make the marinade for the chashu. Cut the leeks into approximately 5 centimeter chunks. Give the leek a haircut and then cut it into 5 centimeter chunks, which is the length I'm most familiar with. <laughs> also quarter the onions as well. Quarter in the onions as well. Place the vegetables in a large bowl and drizzle in some neutral oil to coat our aromatics. We have so much oil here from searing the pork belly, so I'm just gonna drop it on here. Flip once they have charred and blackened. Flip once they have sort of charred. Charred vegetables into a saucepan. Add the vegetables into a saucepan. And add light soy sauce, dark soy sauce, mirin, sake, brown sugar, white sugar, and water. Add all of my light soy sauce, all of my my dark soy sauce, mirin, sake, a concerning amount of white sugar, the rest of my concretely packed brown sugar, and water. Drop the heat to a medium low, then simmer for 30 minutes. Simmer on medium low for 30. Room temp eggs into a pot and cover with room temp water. Room temp eggs in a pot, cover with room temp water. Heat on high. Once the water comes to a rolling boil, set your timer to 6 minutes. Once the water comes to a boil, set a timer for 6 minutes. Cold shock the eggs in an ice bath. Cold shock the eggs in an ice bath. Tap tap roll and peel. Duck, duck, go, and peel. It's looking a little ugly. Let's try another one. Why is it falling apart like that? Now I have a strong feeling that it's not only ugly on the outside, but the inside's not even runny. The difference between this and my TikTok videos is that here, I won't stop trying till I get it. Now let's go back to Nick's video and see if he does it better. So let's start with our soft boiled eggs. Now that our water is boiling, we're ready to add those eggs. So we'll start with boiling water before adding those eggs. I'll drop in my six eggs. We're going to do it for six minutes and nine seconds. Drop in my six eggs and immediately get into a six nine. And when the eggs are done, I'll plunge them straight into the ice bath to halt their cooking. Same ice bath as before. Now it's time to peel our eggs. Now it's time to Duck, duck, roll, and hopefully this time it goes better than before. What the? Alright, at least we know that the egg yolk is running this time. So we just gotta be a little more gentle with it. 
The sauce should be finished, so strain it and reserve two cups of the sauce. After 30 minutes, we'll strain out the sauce and put aside a little bit for the eggs. Gently drop your eggs in, cover and let it marinate in the fridge overnight. We'll pour the sauce over the eggs, put a paper towel on top so it doesn't leave any white spots and then cover overnight. And pour the sauce over the pork roll. Now pour the sauce over the pork roll. We're going to cover with parchment paper with a hole cut in the middle. This technique is called cartouche. Cover with a parchment paper with a hole in the middle. This technique is called cartouche. Once it comes up to temperature, put it in the oven at 325 Fahrenheit for two hours. Bring it to a simmer, cover, and braise for two hours. Let it rest in room temperature. So right now, the pork will be too soft and tender like a woman's touch. I've never experienced a woman's touch, but this does seem pretty nice. Yeah, yeah! Transfer the roll into a Ziploc bag along with the rendered sauce. I don't trust Ziploc bags with liquid in it because of past trauma. So we're gonna put it in a container. And let it rest overnight in the fridge. And another item that I can't eat till tomorrow. Now the alkaline noodles. Baking soda or its scientific name, sodium bicarbonate, when heated in the oven at 200 degrees Celsius for an hour will become sodium carbonate. I guess she's saying baking in the oven makes the bicarbonate just carbonate. It's more alkaline when it's no longer bi, which is a concept that my older sister dabbled with in college. Then slowly pour in the water little by little to make sure that the dough is well hydrated. Mix with your hands in circular motion the consistency should resemble wet sand. 5 grams of salt and sodium carbonate each to 500 grams of bread flour. Last time I went to the beach was like 2 years ago, but I know this doesn't feel like wet sand. Once the dough slightly comes together, transfer it into a large Ziploc bag. Transfer the dough into a Ziploc bag. Then step on the dough. Stepping is recommended since the dough is too stiff to knead by hand. I really don't want to put my feet on my food. So uh, let's head back to Nick's video and please, please don't be doing anything weird. You could almost use him as a nice scarf. Just toss him over myself and walk around like this in public. Bruh. I guess we're gonna have to step on it then. Roll out the dough and run it through the pasta machine at the lowest setting and laminate the dough by folding it on top of each other by thirds. Why does my dough look like it's having an allergic reaction? Also, this is literally like cement. I'm putting my body weight on it. It doesn't change at all. Is harder than a classroom would. Transfer the noodles into an airtight container and rest it in the fridge overnight so that it develops more flavor. I don't want to wait another night anymore. I'll cook everything today. Three aspects of a sauce. The first is going to be the miso base. Some red miso. This. It's doubanjang. A tablespoon of doubanjang and mix it together. Second component is the tare. Since we already have this beautiful chashu and the marinade, using this tare and incorporating some bonito flakes into it. That seems a little weird, so I'm just gonna steep some dried shiitake and bonito flakes. I'll do one part dashi and then two part braising liquid. And that would be our tare. The last component is the aromatic oil. I'm going to be using ginger, garlic, and some scallions. We'll hit it with the GGS. And then I'm going to add some of these chili powder we made from the mapa tofu video. And then hot oil in. I think we have every component ready. So assembling it will be based on my intuition. So first off, we'll cut off the chashu into thin pieces. And then we'll take out the marinated egg. Instagram it real quick. I have this thing where I get older. And then cut it up. The yolk looks pretty beautiful. Nice job team. Now let's heat up the broth and cook some noodles. I wonder if whisking the broth will emulsify it better. What the hell just happened? And then I'll let the noodles cook till just a little bit chewy. Last step, we're gonna warm up the pork belly with a torch. I'm guessing to assemble a ramen bowl, we're gonna go with the miso, the aromatic oil, the tare, a couple ladles of broth, and then we'll put the noodles in. After that, in with the eggs, a couple pieces of chashu, and then dump in the scallion, and finish it off with some seaweed sheets. I'll be honest, 
This is looking pretty good. I'm proud of myself. It's been more than two days since I started cooking this. I really hope it's worth it. When I put this much effort into something that's eventually gonna go into shit, I start drawing connections to life itself, but I don't go there anymore. The only problem I have with slurping is that it always gets on my shirt. The bone broth provides a rich foundation for the tare to shine through with that sweetness and umami and the handcrafted noodles are flavorful in and of itself. All the effort spent the past two days is justified. Highly recommend all these recipes. You can do them however you like at home. Alright, thank you.